Now, refine is a tool for data cleaning. You can see when you open it that the first thing it says is a power tool for working with messy data. Our data qualify. So presumably this should be a good tool for doing that. Notice that it doesn't say that it's a database or a spreadsheet. It might look like that when we start to use it and it might have some of the same ability to manipulate data that a spreadsheet does or a database does, but it's not. The reason that it is not is that everything that we do in Refine is basically a recipe. We're going to add items to a recipe as we go. And the recipe starts with the original data and does every single step to it to arrive at the end result. It's not stored in a database anywhere. It's not even stored in a file anywhere. The data that as we change them are not stored anywhere. Only the recipes are stored. If we want data back out of it, we need to export the data. So, this is not a database, nor is it a spreadsheet. It's just the tool to manipulate the data. And I'll show how to export data and how to import data. Okay. So the first thing I would like to do is to select a file to work with. Now, I would like to be able to create a new project. Later, I'm going to have you following along with the exact steps that I do. Right now, there's no need to do that. You don't have to watch and do what I do. You don't have to keep up. I'm going to open a file now. I'll choose a file. This screen is all about the selection of the source. And I am able to get data sources, data files, either from this computer or from the web or from a clipboard or even from, say, a Google spreadsheet or a Google Fusion table. I can get them directly if I'm already logged in. We're going to be getting files from our computers. Here it gives a list of the different formats that Refine should be able to use and to import. What we found is that the Excel spreadsheet for Alex's data is in a format that Refine does not understand. So we can't use it directly as an Excel spreadsheet. Instead, we have to change this spreadsheet into a text file for Refine to look at. Okay. When I do my next session, we'll start with that. We'll actually export Alex's, text file, Alex's Excel file into a text file. And we'll use it and we'll refine it. But for now, for the purposes of giving you a quick tour, I'm going to use a, a different file. I'll use the file that's already been exported by me. Here's Alex's Excel file. Here's Alex's comma separated value file that I've already e exported. So now I want to open that and click next. The data are being uploaded into Refine. Refine looked at the file and it said, I'd like to try to figure out the format of this data. And I'm going to guess. And this is the result of the guess. And down below are all the things that Refine guesses about the data file. And that's what it looks like. Let me scroll down a little bit here so we can see everything. I guess we can't see it all at once. So I'll leave it where it is. So, according to Refine, without me telling Refine anything, there should be several columns in Alex's database. And the names of the columns are given up above. And some of the first values of those columns are shown here. So this is a view to tell me, is Refine guessing correctly? And it looks good. We have data for families in a group field. That seems fine with me. Here's a gen name. I'm supposing this is a genus. Sure, those look like genera. Years look like years, months, and days. All, all those look good. So it seems Refine has done a fine job. 
to sh look at what happens if refine doesn't guess correctly, let me click on tabs. So this is what it would look like if the data were imported as a tab delimited text file. We'd have one big field with that huge long name in it. Okay? So Refine really did guess correctly at what the original data were. It's a comma separated value list. Over here, there are plenty of other parameters that you can set for the import of the data. The first one is how many lines at the beginning of the file should I ignore? In Alex's case, the first line are the column names, so we don't want to ignore any. If we had other stuff up there that wasn't data, like some comment about the data set, you'd want to ignore all of those lines and not import them, and that's what that allows you to do. The next one says, parse the next one, in this case line, as a column header. That's saying, in Alex's data, treat the first row as column headers, and that's what it's done. If that was not selected, then it would just say, okay, column one, column two, column three, column four, and the first row is supposed to be data, tag D, but that's not the case for Alex's file. So that's what you would do if there was no column header row. And if you did, all of your columns would be named column one, column two, and so forth. So there are plenty of things you can specify. You can see you can be very particular about it. The next one is you're allowed to throw away the first rows of data. So suppose after this there were a whole bunch of rows of some kind of description. You could throw those away. The next one says load at most a certain amount of rows of data. This allows you to just preview. Suppose you just want to look at the structure, but you don't want all 100,000 rows. This allows you to look at the first 10 rows, for example. I can show you what that looks like. Let me select three here. So load at most three rows of data. All the other ones went away. I didn't delete anything. I'm just only looking at the first three. But I really do want the whole data set. So let me change that back. Next is to tell Refine whether we want Refine to try to figure out what kind of data is in each cell. Refine has here in lighter color, it's green, to show me that Refine thinks those are numbers. It may be wrong. It may be that they're, they're not supposed to be numbers, they're supposed to be text. If that was true, then I should either tell Refine not to interpret, or later on I should change the interpretation. So, but it looks like numbers really are numbers, and text in black really are text, so that's fine. So, so far, Refine is doing a great job. I really didn't have to change anything. The next one is quotation marks are used to enclose the cells containing a column. Now, I don't know what original data looked like, but let me try to unclick that and see if it tells, gives me an example. Yes, it changed the data quite a bit. Look at the name string. Volta and prefix. SN number, suffix, day, month, and year. What it has done, in the original data, there were quotes around this whole string. So Refine looked at that and said, you know, I'm guessing that the original data had quotes around strings like this, strings that had punctuation in them. It guessed correctly, and it put all that into one field. So I want this, because the name string really is all of that. Here, I can tell 
refine that I don't want any of the blank rows. Playing with Excel spreadsheets, often if you create a spreadsheet, there are rows at the bottom that are made or brought into use in the Excel spreadsheet, but they don't have data in them yet, but they've been enabled. It happens when you enter data and then delete it from the bottom. So they're enabled. If you import those, they would import as blank rows. Furthermore, you might have rows in the middle that didn't have any data in them. This allows or tells Refine whether you want those rows to be in this data set or not. This is saying keep all such rows. But you could say don't keep all such rows just as easily. For us, it doesn't matter because we can get rid of them easily enough inside of Refine. This one's important. Sometimes in the data, there are fields that have spaces in them only. And sometimes there are fields that have nothing in them. And this is telling Refine whether you want all the fields that have nothing in them to be stored that way, really as nothing, or whether you want there to be a space in Refine, a blank field as opposed to a null value. And the last one is whether you would like the source file name to be in here as a column name. Sometimes this is really useful because you're doing some data cleaning and you're going to do the data cleaning on several files. If you keep the file name and store it with the source, then you get a new column that says exactly where it came from. It just puts it right in there for you. So that can be really useful. I'll keep that one on. That's the only thing I really want to tell Refine to do that it wasn't going to do for me automatically. The other important thing is the character encoding. Right now, Refine had no idea what it was. In fact, I have no idea what it is. I can try to select it, but I don't really know what the encoding is. For the data that you download from GBIF, the, the encoding will always be in UTF-8. Now, what I would like to do is, first of all, try to convince you that there's a piece of software that's quite useful to you in addition to those that you have seen. And, let me go here to Alex's data. The piece of software that I'm talking about is Notepad++. Some of you might use this. Windows comes with a file, or um, an application called Notepad. But it's very simplistic. There's not a lot you can do with it. Notepad++ is extremely sophisticated, but just as easy to use. And it looks like Notepad, mostly. The thing that's useful for, about it, and the reason I want you to have it, is that it allows you to look in detail at the content of the records. This is one way to look at it, and that's what you would normally look at it in any text editor. But let's do something interesting. 